Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, one thing I think we can all agree on is that this is the most important issue in British politics and has been for a very long time and that it has been consistently evaded. And that evasion is like running a business and not knowing what business you're in. Uh, Britain needs to decide whether we are essentially part of the project to create a much more united Europe, essentially a nation state of Europe, or whether we wish to stand aside from that. And the present crisis has polarized that issue because it is quite clear that the most likely outcome of the Euro's current difficulties is, a mu is the logic of the single currency, which is a much more tightly united fiscally and politically uh, inner core. And that is going to raise the issue for us of whether we wish to be part of that or not. And I think I just want to try and explain why uh, the Continentals want to create a much more united Europe. I think the first reason is one of scale. Britain is 1% of the world's population. We're about just under 4% of the world's economy. Europe as a whole is about 8.5% of the world's population. It's about 20% of the world's economy at the moment. We face a total transformation of the world economy. The rise of Asia, the move of power from west to east uh, is on an unprecedented scale, the like of which we've not seen for 500 years. And this has entirely changed our position. Unless we are more united in Europe, I think our prospects of having any influence in the world that is arising before us is very limited. And I think that the... And I think this is not just a question of economics. I think it's a question of civilization. I think it's a question of identity. I think it is a question about whether European culture, generally, is able to maintain itself, and the values that we hold is able to, are able to be maintained in the world. And that is why, actually, the real issue, which you, I congratulate you for focusing on, and why I'm uh, in favor of a referendum here, is the issue is one of democracy. Because part of this shift of power from west to east is also a shift away from democracy. We, uh, the, the west has been about the proposition that you cannot have the benefits of a free economy without a free society. We, that is how we won the Cold War. But we are now facing a challenge from societies that do not have that proposition and, in fact, are disproving it on a very large scale. And I think it's also a matter about democracy closer to home, because in this new globalized world, the power of economics is vastly greater than the power of politics. Economics is international. Politics has remained national. And that imbalance means that although we have elections and we have parliaments at a national level, they cannot actually do very much. The issues that really matter to people, will I have a job tomorrow, will I have a pension that's worth anything, is beyond the power of national politicians to influence. Unless we create international politics on the same scale as international economics, unless we redress this balance between the power of markets and the power of the ballot box, and that is the challenge. Now, it may well be that this is impossible. David Davis said that you can only have a democracy in a nation state, you know, a country the size of Britain. Well, that may be true. And that's what is being tested in Europe. I mean, the European Union is, is, has many imperfections, but it is an attempt to address that issue. And you, you, the, the, the only thing that I would ask you to, to, to consider is if it is indeed impossible that you, can, that you can only have a democracy in a nation state on the scale of Britain or France, then democracy itself in this new world is in danger. Thank you.